community for this project is a core. How you get it, that's up to you. We'll also need a cheese grater. We'll be able to use the cork for actually a variety of things. Uh, we can make the actual full base out of it. Uh, we can use them to just generate some stone, some plates, some bit of scattered debris. Additionally, we can use leftover spruce to create these like metal beams that are just sticking out of the ground. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Not wasting any more time, it's time to grab our cheese grater and start sending down our cork. Mainly because apparently they don't actually design corks for bases. I'm outraged. But anyway, I grabbed some sprue cutters and started to tear away at the base, generating some nice rocks. Trying my best to work my way downwards to the cork and create something that looks like a nice diorama piece. Then scratching out a hole for I'll be inserting the little towel drone that I have. It's part of the story. Checking to make sure that my guy actually fit in the base. Luckily he did, but the base was kind of boring, so I grabbed some of the pieces and tried to generate this little ridge and added some tiny little rocks beside it. Glazing the entire thing in super glue, which would make it rock hard and essentially easier for when I start dry brushing the base. And we were done. It looks pretty good. I have an idea. I haven't tested it out yet, so hopefully this actually works where once we actually grade the cork, I want to use the leftover material to combine it with some paint and create some texture paint for your bases. If this works, this will be a fantastic way to make some extremely cheap texture paint. I collected the pieces of the cork that I graded and put them into the shot glass. Then grabbing some dollar store acrylic black paint and pouring it all over this mixture. I'm not sure why I said mixture, it's not a mixture at the moment, but anyway, I tried mixing the entire thing, and at this point, I considered using PVA glue, but decided against it because I felt it was unnecessary. The mixture wasn't easy to spread around because I'm quite certain I definitely overdid it with the paint. It was very flowy, but I did my best to spread it around. And looking at it from the side, the texture just looks cool. I mean, it looks like an awesome texture. Then I made another one just to test some alternative colors in case the first one goes wrong. Then I left the base to dry for 24 hours. It's now the next day, and these things are just absolutely solid. I did not expect that at all, so let's not waste any more time and build some Terra bases. I started off by sponging on some Liquitex Dark Umber. I really like this color as it has a very matte finish and excellent coverage. Then adding a small bit of AKD Brown and mixing it on the base while the paint is still wet. Essentially web blending, but without any requirement for skill whatsoever. Then I grabbed some AK Ochre and started dry brushing it on the base. Uh, it's essentially a very desaturated yellow, but it's still vibrant enough that it does an amazing effect when highlighting bases. I tend to dry brush very slow and just apply a very large amount of small movements with very little paint. This allows the paint to go on quite smoothly and not leave behind any of those unpleasant streaks. Moving on to Vallejo Dry Pigment Natural Umber. I absolutely love using pigments on bases as it's an incredibly fast way to create a visual interest that you cannot get with other mediums. Then I grabbed a sponge and started to clean off all the dry pigment from the top layers of our texture. This will create a much more natural looking texture rather than just dust covering everything. Alternatively, you can just use your finger. Then I grabbed a small tuff and applied some decor to the base, bringing some life into it because why not, you know? I will say this did just increase the cost of this base about tenfold. <laughs> Time to get spooky with Violet. I mean, alien with Violet. Apologies to anyone named Violet out there. I started by using AK Violet Blue and applying a very thin wet coat with it, then grabbing some AK Ultramarine and applying it over the base. Then grabbing some AK Green Blue and applying that to the base as well. Dry brushing on some black and I realized this looks awful. So when needs must, we must go pink. After how much I dislike how the base looked with black, I did consider just repainting the entire thing in a natural umber color, but I decided against it and started just dry brushing this pink color. The pink color is essentially just Vallejo Warlord Purple, mixed in with a tiny bit of black and then working my way to Warlord Purple by itself, and then adding a bit of white to get it more pink looking. And then continuously just dry brushing that all over the base, then adding a bit of white to give it even more pink. Point, I'll be honest, the base was looking way better than I expected. It was alien, it was weird, and it was just unnatural. But I wanted to accentuate the previous details that I made, so I took some of the previous colors and started applying them in a very wet manner. Then literally just taking some gloss varnish and applying it over those bases to create sort of a wet effect. Then once again grabbing those exact same colors and adding them to the mixture while it was still wet. This will hopefully trap the paint inside of the varnish and create a much more liquid 3D effect. In the end, it was looking a little bit too wild, so I actually decided to use some of this pigment that we used from previous base and essentially create an effect that this alien liquid is sort of like pushing in onto the umber land and transforming everything around it. Moving on to our rubble bases, for which I'll be using all of these materials to make these four bases. Additionally, uh, for the fourth base, I did use some extra stuff. 
We'll be using that sprue to generate these metal beads, similar to what I did with the Tyranid short. This time, I will be shaping them a little bit more. As I'm imagining an apocalyptic landscape where the buildings have collapsed and the inner infrastructure is just being revealed everywhere. I grabbed some super glue and started by just placing down bits of corks that I had. I usually don't think too much about this part and just grab the first piece that's near me. Afterwards, I try to build a bit of height with some additional pieces. By itself, this will look a bit boring, so I grab a bit of sprue and cut off a little piece. I'm not sure if it was just my super glue or I don't know if it's just super glue in general, but it took a really long time to actually place down these pieces and to have them hold. If you notice my hands shaking violently, I did have a bit too much coffee and at that point, I did super glue my fingers like three times. That's what you call a combination of anxiety and coffee moving on to the next base. For this one, once I place down the cork, I imagine the beam sort of falling onto this piece of rubble and crumbling on top of it. After super gluing my fingers multiple times, I decided to smarten up and use a pair of tweezers to actually place down this bit of plastic sprue, placing down some additional bit of rubble just so the base doesn't look too boring. My metal beam was looking a little bit too lonely, so I placed down an additional bit as if it broke off when it hit the rock, placing down an additional bit of debris as if it fell on top of the metal beam. For the next base, I put some super glue on it and decided to use some of this cork dust we had remaining, putting the base in the bag and giving it a nice shake. This way, hopefully just the right amount of cork will attach itself to the base, giving it a nice look of just small bits of rubble that are scattered around the base. For the fourth base, I made sure it shows a piece that was circular, making sure that it aligns with the actual roundness of the base. Then I picked out a nice chunky piece and sanded it out using the cheese grater. Since it was really small, I made sure to use the actual tweezers, not to accidentally grate my hands. Once I had it placed down, I grabbed some of the sprue. This time, I'll be getting a much larger piece, shaping it with the X-Acto knife. Uh, keep in mind, my X-Acto knife is extremely dull. This thing could not cut something, even if you tried. But nonetheless, I'm still doing it against myself, as once I already cut myself badly enough, so I learned my lesson. And then I bent it with my fingers as if it got damaged during fall. I glued it with super glue just to realize I'm an idiot. I literally could have just used plastic glue given the fact that it's touching the plastic base, and it would have been 10 times easier. After attaching an additional metal beam, I took the miniature that will be on this base and made sure that nothing was actually getting in the way of it. I decided to cheat and grab some citadel skulls as I just love those skulls and every base can use a bit of skull. I also attached this Kadian communication backpack. It's been sitting on my desk for quite a while and it just felt like a perfect fit for this base. At this point, I couldn't help but feel like the base was already telling a story of this horrible event that happened and now these space marines are coming in to try to reclaim what they can. Moving on to the painting for which I used burnt umber, mixing it into the wet palette and made sure I had quite a bit of moisture, then adding in some brownish green to the mixture and mixing it on the wet palette. I didn't wait for the paint to dry and just applied it to the base while the paint was still wet. This way, the paint naturally has an ability to mix and create smoother transitions between itself, then using some brownish green on its own. Once again, while the paint was still wet to create those smoother transitions. Adding in some ochre with brownish green, mixing it one to one and using an ink brush to dry brush it on essentially. It's a little bit different from dry brushing as they retain a lot more moisture. Then I grabbed a dry brush with some ochre, essentially applying highlights to the base. As with the previous base, I'm using a lot of very small motions. This helps to grab just the edges. Then I mixed a bit of ivory to the previous mix and applied it to the dry brush again, making sure it cleaned off any excess paint. This time, I just went over top for just a few extra highlights. For the metallic, I mixed some gun metal with some burnt umber from previous. This will create a nice rust effect for the metal, as the theme I went for is this Nurgle corrupted landscape. They're getting some scale 75 Mars orange and essentially using it to apply rust effects to the metal. It's a very matte paint, so when you apply it, it genuinely looks more like rust than orange paint. Then grabbing some metal color gunmetal gray and applying it with an ink brush as essentially a dry brush. But again, since ink brushes retain a lot more moisture, it's applying a much smoother effect. As I'm imagining a lot of little stones and dust slowly chipping away at the rust, revealing the metal underneath. Then as with the previous base, I applied some dry pigment to the base, trying my best to get into all the crevasses. Then using a sponge to clean off any excess pigment at the most top layers. And applying some Vallejo Wild Tufts Autumn. I'm a really big fan of tufts as I just genuinely enjoy how they look on every single base. Especially for a Nurgle theme overgrown base, I felt like I just couldn't go without them. For an alternative color scheme, I did rubber black, then applying some burnt umber from the previous steps, and then dry brushing burnt umber mixed with some ochre. Adding in a bit of more ochre, and working my way until I finally just dry brush with ochre by itself. Then adding a bit of ice yellow to the ochre to apply some additional highlights. Then using gunmetal gray for the metallics, and applying dark umber with some water as a wash. Then using some Vallejo old rust pigments, and adding on some dry tufts. And thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this.
I also applied a pox walker to one of the bases just so you could have an easier idea of seeing what they look like with a miniature on top of them rather than just bare bases on their own. 